Well, they took an inspiration from it for forever, so might as well have some of them in it. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, starting here once again. This is the Fort Langley Community Hall. It's been around since 1931, and as you can see, it was used in the episode Supernatural, and even the color is actually quite similar. It hasn't changed much in the years. It's been around for near on 100 years. Fort Langley is the area of BC that gets filmed in quite a bit. Uh, Supernatural shot here a couple of times, uh, but this was the most blatant they ever were. Uh, most of the time it's Hallmark movies that are here, but if you want a, a movie, a recent movie that actually shows off a lot of Super, or sorry, of Fort Langley, it would be Sonic the Hedgehog 2. They shut down the town for like two weeks. Uh, more so they shot down towards the water, but yeah. So there you go, starting off an episode once again in a spot that, you know, that's recognizable, that's nearby where I live. Hey guys, this is my review of Shut Up Dr. Phil, episode five of Supernatural season seven. And this is the episode that's pretty much known for the fact that they got James Marsters and Charisma Carpenter from Buffy to come in and play these two witches that are having a marital dispute in the town of Fort Langley and which people are dying. All the while, Sam is still kind of suspicious about Dean because Dean's acting very, very guilty, much more guilty than ever before. This essentially is a very much a filler episode that just so happens to have a story element in it that is underlining it and then eventually put into the end of the episode. Credit given, it's still better than a lot of how Andrew Dabb associated his storyline elements into the latter season, season 12 to 15. Not gonna f really actually give any kind of point away for that because in the end, James Marsters is the only reason why they're able to kidnap and capture a Leviathan. A little bit of a connectivity there to the main plot. It's not gonna happen a lot in this season, I know. Overall, this episode actually has a lot more humor into it, a lot more of that kind of spin-off, that episode of the week humor that Supernatural would become to be known for. I do enjoy James and Charisma in this episode. I think that they're funny with what they have, their material. They don't go full out Buffy reference, but it's there, you can see it, you can get the vibe from it. I will say that it's a little bit too clean cut and dry I feel at the end but I think that if they had killed them which not to say that they don't deserve it they have killed a lot of innocent people in this episode and they just get off scot-free but if they had killed them then there's no way that the leviathan at the end of the episode could be captured so it's kind of a catch-22 one thing can't happen without the other fully happening so I guess that's what they were stuck with I don't mind this episode I think it's funny I think it's got some quirky elements to it but overall it's a little bit of a complete pause on the story despite the fact that there are story elements in it you can tell that that muster is starting to dissolve and we're kind of trying to focus more on this guilt aspect of dean which again still don't understand how they established it when they're trying to backtrack it so heavily in my own personal opinion i think what sarah gamble was trying to do was trying to bring back those character elements that were in the earlier seasons of Supernatural, especially season two to four, with the boys kind of at odds with each other, but also having these little inner kind of conflicts with each other, unbeknownst as well as known. I see the attempt there, and again, in correlation with how this show would do this same fucking story bit throughout the years and it would just become dumber and dumber and dumber and more ridiculous as to why these guys are lying to each other as the show would go on this one is not as bad as it would become in the latter season truly its main standout factor is that it has spike and cordelia in it if it didn't have these two in it I would be hard pressed to remember this episode aside from the fact that it was shot in Fort Langley. I even forgot that they captured a Leviathan at the end of this episode. That's how forgettable this episode is. So in the end, I'm gonna give it, ugh, I'm gonna give it a very generous three out of seven. Not a lot happens, but there's still some good humor in it. There's some good special effects in it. It's cool to see Fort Langley shown for pretty much exactly what it is. As they roll up to the building, you can see the Fort Langley banners on the street. Don't know if they couldn't get the permission to take those down. Or they just didn't care. Also wanted to say this is the new light setup. This is thanks to my Patreon supporters. I finally got enough money through it and I figured out how to get the money from that into a means that I could buy these lights. Um, I'm still learning where to place them exactly, but thank you. That ring light there was one of the things that I was using amongst these other 
cheap little shit lights that I had for a little while. Thank you guys so much for your support. Very much appreciated. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. So now let's see what you guys have to say about this episode. I find Dr. Phil to be really funny in terms of witches involving Dawn and Maggie Stark. I do enjoy the scene where the witches attack Dean to make him shut up while Sam is trying more to help through their problems. I like the ending of the episode of Sam asking Dean if they were good. This episode does have its flaws and it comes back later in season 8's clip show with them trying to help Jenny Klein. However, I'll give the episode a 4 out of 7. It's one of the funnier episodes of the season, bringing back a li little life to the darker side before things go to hell for the brothers. I guess, yeah, there is something. Yeah, the humor bit of it is good, but, like, literally the only part I remember is that Buffy's uh, Spike and Cordelia are in this episode. Uh, Shut Up Dr. Phil proves that Dean's guilt is not swept away with the previous episode, and Dean just isn't ready to come clean. I love how this episode is about two witches being passive-aggressive towards each other by hurting others they care about and not each other. Funny enough, Sam and Dean have done the same thing. Oh, good point there, Joe. Granted, uh, not as intentionally violent. The deaths are horrifically fun, as Supernatural is known for. Of course, it's an allegory for Sam and Dean needing to talk for each other, to come clean for what they did, uh, what Dean did to Amy. It's a good bridge to the next episode that originally was going to be called Attack of the Clones. Ah! That's actually kind of funny. Yeah, I know, again, I, I make the comment that they're trying to kind of reach back to these inner conflict reflectiveness that they would do in the first five seasons, but... I definitely feel it's it's a bit weak, but it is better than what they would do later on in the show. The only good thing about the next episode is bu actors from Buffy. Everything else is boring as hell for me. No, not entirely wrong there. I <laughs> Shut up, Dr. Phil. Episode has only two great things. Maggie, Don Stark, James Marsters, and Charisma Carpenter did a wonderful job playing them. That totally reminds me of Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner's film War of the Roses. Unfortunately, this episode is so forgettable for me. I've actually always meant to see... War of the Roses is a Danny DeVito directed movie, but I've heard it's very, very good. Shout out Dr. Phil's success hinders towards the two guests they brought from Vaffy the Vampire Slayer. Unfortunately, I'm not a fan of neither, which much like Veronica Mars, I find Buffy to be one of the most overrated shows, so I judge the episode without rose tinted glasses and this most obnoxious episode. All right, buddy, like, uh, we gotta find a divide here, man, because all this is like the negative vitriol has been a lot. I, obviously, the season's not great, but let's. Blah, 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 blah. Let's have some, like, more, like, constructive stuff. Shut up, Dr. Phil. This is definitely one of the worst episodes of the season. Not too long ago, I actually rewatched season seven, and when I saw this episode, I, I couldn't be bothered. I just watched the end scene and went on to the next episode. And to add one thing, I'm shocked that if this episode isn't in your top five... Oh, it's not... It's not in my top five worst. No. Um... It might be a contender, like, but it depends on how bad the other episodes are. I do know that once Bobby dies, there's tons of episodes that I just hated because they were just so boring. Um, they got what's his name from the Pirates movies to be discount Bobby, and then all of a sudden he just dies off screen. All right, guys, thank you for your comments. And now we've got Slash Fiction. Oh, this is when Sam and Dean Leviathan versions go on killing spree. So I remember that. And I remember this is when we're not going to see the Impala for much longer. It's going to go like disappear for the next little while, isn't it? Unfortunate. But give me you guys' comments about that episode and I will read those off in the next review. Do note, I will not be here. I will be out of the country next Thursday. So, so just to let you know, I will be adding the comments to this video on Friday. So if you want your comments read in that video, I would suggest posting your comments immediately upon watching this video if you want them featured in that one, because they won't be otherwise. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, see you guys next week.